Hi everyone, it's Kathleen Morris here. Today we had the pleasure of chatting to Sylvia Tolisano on Facebook Live and she told us all about uh, digital writing, integrating blogging into the curriculum, documenting learning, hyperlinked writing, all sorts of great things. So take the time to look at the video and I'm sure you'll learn lots from Sylvia. So, happy Australia Day to all our Aussie friends. It's Australia Day here and it's Friday morning. I know for some of you it is still Thursday. Hello, Sylvia. Great. So, Sylvia, where are you based? Tell us where you are. It's Australia Day here and it's Friday morning. Whoops, let me see if I can arrange my iPad a little better. Um, it is Thursday um, afternoon um, in Florida. North Florida. And we've got Sue Wyatt here. She's great. She's, she's an Australian too. Happy Australia Day, Sue. <laughs> so that um, worked pretty well with live, Facebook Live. First time I'm doing this, so. I know. That's what I was going to say. This is my first time, so it's a bit of an experiment. So far, so good. We've got a couple of people coming in to join us, and I know a lot of people – couldn't make it, but they're going to watch the recording. So that's the great thing about Facebook Live is we'll be able to post it for everyone to see. They can watch it at their own time, which is awesome. Hi, Karina. Awesome to have you here. Um, now, Sylvia, as we get started, let's just, um, could you just tell us a bit about yourself? Because I've been a big fan of yours for many years. Um, I don't know when you started blogging. I started about 10 years ago, and you were certainly someone that I followed instantly because I just love the work you do with um, blogging, also global collaboration and also um, like bringing in the pedagogy to blogging and making it really high quality and purposeful. So how did you get into all that? Could you tell us? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I think I started blogging about 12 years ago, so not, not too, uh, too far ahead of you. Um, and it was a natural, it was a natural thing for me. I have always written diaries since I've, you know, write, read the diary of Anne Frank when I was 11. And, um, <clears throat> and um, it, it was a natural thing somehow. Um, I don't know, maybe I was born with it too. This whole idea of, um, of documenting, of writing letters. I used, you know, I grew, um, I was born in Germany, but grew up in Argentina. So my um, my grandparents were in Germany, and um, and for me, I was kind of the document of the family. My parents didn't like to write very much, um, but my grandparents wanted to receive at that point letters. What were, what were we doing in South America? So um, I became the document, and I wrote letters and um, and just tried to to get them to to know a little bit about what what their family that far away is doing. So um, I guess that's how it started. And, um, and then once, once um, I think I started on Blogger um, back then. And mm -hmm. um, it was a natural thing. I wanted to, I remember my very first blog post. I think it's like two lines, two sentences. Well, let's see how this is going. I'm going to share what I'm learning about teaching um, world languages and see if I can encourage others to share too. So that's how it started. Awesome. So you've got a background in teaching and now you do some consulting and things like that, sharing your passion. And I hear you've got a big trip coming up because you do travel all over to help teachers learn about these sorts of things, don't you? Yeah. So, um, so it, it really, it's because of my blog. It's because of my blog. I was in the classroom. I was, um, I was everything that I was reading on other blogs. And then once Twitter came along, um, I tried it out and pretty much did action research and said like, you know, I'm going to try if this works. I'm going to document it. I'm going to share it so others can, can learn from it and not having to reinvent the wheel. And, and that's really what happened. The more I did it, the more people said, can you come to our school? Can you, can you share this in person with us? And, um, and I tried to do both for quite a long time and it just became too much. Couldn't do it. And, um, I did go for a year to um, to teach in Brazil at an international school, which kind of got me mm -hmm. got me started with um, with all the international schools. And um, and that's once I came back, I decided I'm not going to go back in uh, working full time 
in a, in a school. Um, and um, I think this might be better now. Well, no, I my glasses are really reflective. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can okay. see everything <laughs> through it. And um, yeah, so so that's kind of it's it's really because of because of my blog. Um, that's yeah, so where okay. it started. That's where I'm sharing things. That's where I, I'm I meet people and um, and make connections. And um, it's my it's my global hub. It's really exactly. that's what it has been. That's um, uh, what it has become because it was simply a. Um, I can't keep track of all the things I do. It's been twelve years, and I Google myself, and it's it's on the blog where I find it. So so it's it's for me. It's a big help. That's amazing. And a couple more people have joined us, so welcome. And if you're just tuning in, we've got Sylvia here, who you probably know better as Languages. She's very well known in the the educational blogging community, but also just the education community, sharing all her wonderful messages and I know a few people have got some questions I'd like to ask you so if you do have a question feel free to type it into the comments this is an amazing opportunity to get Sylvia to personally answer your questions people would travel far and wide to see you and get your insights so feel free if you have a question uh, I know for a lot of people Sylvia um how in, how to integrate blogging and you know different styles of digital writing into the classroom is a big is sort of seems to be the major problem they face once they get their blog set up they they're like we're set up now what do we do so do you have any tips for people about how they could integrate blogging better into their classroom i think um I think the biggest obstacle most teachers face is this whole idea of I can't just add one more thing to my plate. I already have to teach them. All those other things I can't now add to teach them blogging. And I think the first thing that needs to happen is that mind shift. You're not teaching blogging. You are. You're teaching reading and writing. And in addition, you're not just teaching reading and writing the traditional reading and writing, which you are. But in addition, you're teaching digital reading and writing and an amplified way of reading and writing, which is com the majority of the schools that I, um, that I t first meet and talk to. And it's being completely ignored because they are fo so focused on the traditional way because that's the important piece that they are not, they're not even attempting. And so it's that mind shift that if you are if you are embedding digital reading and writing, you are teaching the traditional one as well. But if you're only doing traditional teaching, te uh, teaching of reading and writing, you are not addressing the other skills, the new skills. So to me, it's this, it, it's kind of like the, <laughs> the wrong way around. Um, if you were to, to amplify, you would also be teaching the traditional way. But if you're sticking with the traditional way, you're not amplifying and you're not even touching upon those new skills. So um, it's that fear of, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I never learned how to read digitally or write digitally. I didn't grow up that way. I didn't learn that way. I didn't go to school. Nobody taught it this to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm lost. And that's why you stick to the old. So that's, mm. that's kind of um, what I found. It's getting over, getting over that mindset. And once you did, it's easy to embed. Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? And, and you're right, yeah. like people didn't grow up learning these sorts of things. But I find that sometimes... <laughs> I don't know, people um, use that as a bit of an obstacle, like, to to change. So it's important to look past that and good advice. Now, we had a question from, yeah. Uh, we had a question from I... Kelly. Um, and a few people have been asking this about, particularly with older students who might be a bit more disengaged with schooling. And she wants to know how do you get high school students who don't write to try blogging, try digital writing? Uh, do you have any ideas? Um, so with older students, I think it's, it's important. It's to bring, you know, to, to have them understand that they do have a voice and that 
it is not just why are you doing this assignment for the teacher to get a grade, but it is, it is, it's, it's authentic. It's, tr uh, it's a true, it's true writing. It's not just for the grade. And I think that's what engages them. Um, I think, I think we might be past the time when, uh, when the simple act of, I have a blog, I'm going to give you a username and a password and you get to write on that blog and the kids are going to go, yay, you know, this is so cool. <laughs> and I think we're past that point. Um, probably when my, my children were in high school, um, that was still the case 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, they don't get excited about that anymore. You actually have to, I mean, it has to be meaningful. Um, what I'm finding when working with older, with teachers who, who are, uh, who are teaching older students, you can't fool those kids anymore. You can't fool them in saying, um, write that research paper for me, and then you're going to publish it on your blog. Yay. That doesn't yeah. happen because it's additional work. It's additional work for them. The kids get it. It's, it's harder. It's, if, you, you know, if you want, they need to have a reason why they're doing it. And it's, it doesn't cut it by simply for the grade or for, for handing it in for the teacher. So um, kind of like to, to come back around. I think teachers, especially for the older ones, they need to, they need to, um, to create their own um, network. Of, of other teachers from around the world that will provide that authentic audience. They need to get in contact with authors. They need to be connected to experts. They need to be um, to at least have the network that is able to find others who then will reciprocate and become authentic an authentic audience. If a teacher is completely disconnected, how are they going to find? those experts and peers and authors and scientists um, that would interact with their students. And you can't fake that for, for the, the older crowd. No. Excellent advice about having your own network. And that's the great thing about getting this group set up here. There's so many people who've already said that they could um, form connections between their classes. And that's amazing um, sort of motivation for the students to have that authentic audience and Sue Wyatt also added that getting students to write about their passions and things like that is um, always a winner and connecting well. look at the passions and connect them with people that can further their passions that can add to that they can authentically give them good stuff to look into to to push them in one direction that they didn't think about and while doing that, it's not about the content. It's about the skills that they are developing as they are writing, as they are reading, as they are connecting and networking themselves and building their own learning network. And, um, and cu curation, I mean, don't give, get me started on, on the skills of, of learning how to curate your, your own content. So those are all things that, um, that high school students, secondary students, they need to be able to be exposed to and need to have a, somebody there to guide them. Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? So the teacher role is certainly changing um, in that, you know, more of a facil facilitator and helping students find their networks and things like that. And I really do think that um, does motivate students, having that authentic audience and also the global connections. I haven't met any students who don't enjoy it when they're connecting with other students from other countries. That's just... Mm. I don't know, something intrinsic about that students are so curious and just really sparks their passion for learning, I think. And I think we need to make it very clear to, to teachers, those connections don't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. Those are strategic connections that, that we as, as the teachers need to, to have in order to make them for our students. I always say it's like you want connected learners, connected teach, uh, students, you need to have a connected educator. It doesn't work any other way. There are very few kids who are so self-motivated and so self-directed that they are, they are building that for themselves. Usually they still have some kind of role model or mentor behind them, a teacher, a parent, um, 
but I really think it has to be strategic and we just can't leave it up to chance and well, it'll happen. They'll figure that out on their own. No, they don't. They won't figure it out on their own. So true. Great advice. But people who are here are definitely on the right track because, you know, we've got people from 52 different countries in this group. So amazing way to get connected and sort of broaden your horizons in your classroom. Um, now, Sylvia, we had, um, uh, I can't even find it now. I saw it pop up before. Did you see, um, who was it? Holly wanted to know. Holly. A typical, yeah, a typical reading and writing um, lesson. What could it look like? Like a lot of people are still, I guess, um, doing the more traditional reading and writing. And how can you sort of amplify that to bring in some digital tools for writing? So it's not really about um, digital tools that, mm, um, that tools? help you do the traditional, the traditional writing. So I'm thinking more of a complete um, rethinking of what writing is. So um, one of the lessons um, I would suggest, and that's, that's something um, that I'm also um, sharing in, that, in my new book that has been published today. Oh, um, the, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I don't even have it yet. It's probably going to take another week <laughs> until I have it in my hands. But um, it's this whole idea of, of hyperlinked writing. And um, so one of, one of the lessons could be that you ask, ask your students to write one paragraph about their passion, about anything that they want. Okay? So, um, and as you're writing... Just kind of keep track of your thoughts, this whole idea of practicing metacognition as a writer. Um, how do I look for, for words? Um, I mean, all those traditional skills, um, just to be, be, be aware of it. Um, once you have that paragraph about whatever topic you chose, um, set that aside and then start brainstorming. And this does not have to be that doesn't have anything to do with technology you don't have to use a special tool you can literally just use a piece of paper or sticky notes or um, post-it notes whatever and and start brainstorming how is this how is the topic how are my words how is what i the ideas that i wrote in there how is that connected to other things and um, I did, um, Janet Hale and I, um, my co-author, we developed a, um, a taxonomy of hyperlinks, meaning all diff there are different levels. So, for example, if so, um, one person in their, in their paragraph, you have a word that's a little harder, it's a little difficult, the word, it's maybe some other people don't know what it is, go ahead and find a definition online that you can link that word to. Now, that would be considered a low-level hyperlink because it just links to a definition. Mm -hmm. um, you could look for other articles that wrote about the same topic of what you wrote in your paragraph. And you can read that and, again, link to it. So you're really, the lesson would be starting to connected writing. What have I written? Who supports what I wrote? who adds to what I wrote, who opposes what I wrote, and, and finding these links and, and kind of with sticky notes and lines and um, how does that change? Once you have all your, your brainstorm links, which again could be, could be other books, it could be articles, it could be those definitions, it could be Maybe you remember that you wrote on, on your blog a year ago, you wrote about this topic already. So yeah. how do you show your process a year ago, I thought about this differently, or I didn't know something, I hadn't read something yet. So how do you show your process of how you're developing your own understanding? And... Um, and once you have all your sticky notes together, rewrite your paragraph. Now become aware of how is your writing changing because now you are looking at 
different levels and dimensions and connections and how does this change your writing? Does that make sense? That's amazing advice. And the funny thing about that is once you've been blogging for a while, it really, you do become fluent with that without even thinking too much about it, like adding your hyperlinks and um, realizing where you might need to back up what you're saying or where you could link back to something else you said. It seems so complicated, but with practice, it really does become something you get fluent at and certainly a skill that students need to be fluent at, um, you know, moving forward. It's, I, I think you will, you will create, as you're blogging more, um, you will create your own, um, your own um, learn flow, I guess. And um, what has worked for me is I, I create tons of drafts. Um, anytime I have an idea, a thought, I, I start a draft on my blog. And then as I'm reading and as I, I'm on Twitter and somebody is, um, is a, a sharing something or there's a hashtag I'm suddenly interested in, then I start to take those links and I'm dropping them into the draft. So when I start writing, I already have links that I'm going to be able to use in my text. I often do so, that um, too. <laughs> yeah, so you'll, you'll develop your own style. Exactly. But I love the way you also said um, about, um, sorry, using paper. Like you can just do it with sticky notes and things because it, um, it's not really about the digital tool, is it? And it can also really make that concrete for the students because it can seem like a bit of an abstract concept, you know, linking here and there, but just putting it all down on paper and maybe putting it up on the wall or something, that can sort of just make it a really concrete visual demonstration. And think about, think about if, you're, if you want to go a little more amplified and you want to crowdsource a blog post with your class, so you have everybody contribute sticky notes that they feel would be a great link to, the, uh, to a collaborative writing piece. That's a great idea. And I know some um, teachers here um, aren't having student blogs or maybe they will down the track, but that's a good way to bring the students into in, involving them into having the class blog. They can sort of get involved in the hyperlinks and such a great learning opportunity for them. Yeah. Now, for um, a couple of people who've just popped in, um, so we've got Sylvia here and she'll be here for maybe five more minutes. If you've got a question, pop it in now so we might be able to answer it. While we see if anyone has a question, Sylvia, you mentioned your book is released today and I know I'm really excited about reading it because all your blog posts have been so helpful for me. And not only like you are a thought leader in this field, but I also find you offer such practical strategies and things you can use in the classroom or your diagrams and things make everything so clear. So I know that your book's going to be awesome as well. Tell us what it's about and um, who might find it useful. So the book is called a guide to documenting learning, um, how to make thinking um, visible, meaningful, shareable and amplified. And, um, Blogging is, is a whole chapter um, of how do you use blogs to, to exactly do that. And I, I see that Callie, I guess, had just also popped in a question. You know, how often do you have your students blog? And it's part of all the lessons. So maybe that kind of connects a little bit to it. Um, the whole idea of um, it's becoming a learn. Are we back? Did, I think yeah. we just got disconnected. Okay, good. Sorry. Um, this whole idea of, of a learn flow, that blogging is not something separate. It's not a lesson that you do. It's not, a, um, it's not something, okay, let's stop everything we're doing and we're going to blog. It's, it's about embedding it. And um, in the book, uh, we talk about the learn flow, which is you look for learning, which is your objectives, your curricular goals, um, what do you want to document? I mean, it's about documenting learning. So um, I don't want to be documenting a kid, I don't know, chewing, chewing <laughs> gum or something. So it's looking for learning, capture learning, reflect on learning, share learning, and then amplify, amplify learning. That's the learn, learn, uh, learn flow. Look, capture, reflect, share, amplify. And a blog is your 
my preferred platform of doing exactly that. So when I capture, I have to make decisions of what media, uh, medium am I ca uh, capturing? Is it going to be audio, video, text, um, images? My blog can house it all. So um, that's, that's a great piece. The reflective piece, blogs were made for reflection. And, um, and it's, it's, it's a perfect piece to share it out. Don't lock it up. Leave it open to the world. And then, as we mentioned before, strategically connect the blog with others. And um, once you do that strategically, you are, you are not just it's published, but you are making sure that it's amplified, that you are asking others to leave your feedback, to make sure that you leave a comment somewhere else, which links back to your blog post. So it becomes part of that connected reading and that connected, um, the connected thought process, which again, that's the new skill to have. Reading a connected thought process that might start over here, but it goes over there and ends up over here and then connects back through a comment. So that's what's, what is so exciting for me about blogging. Um, so, so hopefully that, that, um, that answered that, how do I, do I embed it in every lesson? No, but it's, it's part of the learn flow. It's yeah, part sure. of how we share and part, um, part of how we reflect. And it's, it's the hub. It's where I, um, where I document and, um, and organize and archive and, um, and share my work and my thinking. And, um, and I think that's, that's the big uh, mind shift. Yeah. And I, I know, like I found at the start, it's sort of something you have to maybe put a bit more of a conscious effort into scheduling into your weekly planner or whatever. Um, but then over time, once you get used to it, it kind of becomes natural, like, oh, this would work well with the blog. This could be a blog post. Um, yeah, you sort of get the hang of it more. But you would probably do need to make more of a conscious effort at the start to get going and to schedule it in, think about how you're going to use it um yeah until you get more familiar do you think sylvia um all habits start with with an effort it doesn't mm -hmm. happen it doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen on its own and just understanding it's it's not a blogging is not a project it's not let's blog for a month um it's 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 finding routines and um if you you know if you make it a priority that in your class um that you want your students reflecting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like as you ask yeah. them to bring paper and a pen. Well, you're going to you're going to be using a block to reflect uh, because it's so much easier than using glue to 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 glue a, an image that you cut out out of a newspaper yes. <laughs> on your paper. Probably an old newspaper too. <laughs> um, so. Becky says that she can't wait to get her hands on the book. And how can people get it? I, I see there's a digital copy, so you could get it for your iPad or your Kindle. Or... Yes, um, I think um, Amazon is already, you already are able to download a, a digital oh, copy. Okay. I'm not sure if um, Amazon Australia, ha um, I'm assuming, I don't know how close they work together, but um, Amazon here in the US, the digital, um, the Kindle version is already available. And then, um, and then I think they start shipping in the U.S. on February 6th. But from Corwin, directly from the publisher, it's already, um, you can already order it. Awesome. Well, congratulations again on your book. And thank you so much for okay. all the work you do for our community. Um, sometimes when you're tapping away, writing those blog posts, you, maybe you you don't know what sort of difference you're making, but your messages are certainly spreading far and wide and making a big difference to a thank lot you. of teachers and students. Um, now we've got Sue Wyatt who's been popping a few of your links into the comment section so people will be able to explore some of the things you talked about more because all the things you talked about today with hyperlinked writing and how you can embed and amplify your learning you've got so many great posts that we really encourage people to take a look at when they've got time to learn more about that so that great. we should let you go it's probably dinner time for you there um in Florida, is it? Yes, <laughs> it is. It's, it's gotten dark while we were talking. 
Oh, now day's just beginning here. So thank you so well, much enjoy. again. Sure, thank you. I'm sure everyone else appreciates it as well. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll just leave a comment on the blog or on Twitter and we'll, we'll get awesome. in touch that way. Okay, bye-bye. Right. See you, everyone. Thank you.